I am Robert Podolsky. I have a degree, master's degree in theoretical physics from Xavier University in Cincinnati. I worked for 10 years as a professional physicist, engineer, uh, systems analyst for government and for industry. Uh, companies like AVCO, GE, Bendix, and also uh, Air Force Avionics Lab and the Coast Guard Electronics Division. And when I first got interested in what was going on, or what had gone on with uh, the attacks of 9-11, there was a lot I didn't know. And initially I wasn't even very interested, I just accepted the generally accepted story. Uh, so then at some point, something piqued my interest, several things actually. One was that I looked up in a manual the burning temperature of jet fuel and found that under the conditions that existed at the World Trade Center on 9-11, uh, that jet fuel had to have been burning at about 750 degrees Fahrenheit. I also noticed that the official explanation of what happened there was that the heat from the fire supposedly softened the steel and melted portions of it perhaps and thereby brought the buildings down. Well, second law of thermodynamics says just like water can only flow downhill when it's poured on the ground, similarly heat can only move downhill. But with heat, downhill means from a region of higher temperature to a region of lower temperature. So if you have a flame at 750 degrees, you can hold that flame under a steel beam forever and you'll never reach a high enough temperature to bend steel let alone melt it at 3,000 degrees. So immediately I knew at that point that the official explanation was dead wrong. There was no way those flames could have possibly brought about the collapse of the building. My next step was to look at the overall energy picture. And this was much more complicated. What I did was I had a basic uh, description of the structure of the building and a basic description of the aircraft and the fuel. So I calculated roughly, I didn't make an accurate calculation, but I did make a conservative calculation. I calculated how much energy would it take to destroy these buildings the way they were destroyed, leaving the pieces of the size that were left and making the concrete into dust. How much energy would that take? So I calculated that. Then I calculated how much energy existed in the system to do that destruction. Well, the kinetic energy of the plane, the chemical energy of the fuel, the potential energy of the building itself. I added those together, and what I got was a figure approximately 1% of what it would have taken to do the destruction that had been done. There was there wasn't nearly enough energy in the system to bring about that destruction. That energy calculation of the total energy basically told me since energy is not created or destroyed but only converted from one form to another that the official description violated the first law of thermodynamics and the heat flowing uphill from a 750 degree flame to a 3000 degree puddle of molten steel violated the second law of thermodynamics. The question I've been asked is what about the rate at which the buildings fell? All three of the World Trade Center buildings fell way faster than they would have had there been any resistance from the buildings. They fell at an accelerated rate close to that of free fall and there were periods during the fall that actually was free fall. So somehow the lower parts of the, each building got out of the way of the upper parts falling and provided no resistance. The equation for this phenomenon is S equals one half G T squared, where G is the acceleration of gravity, 32 feet per second, 
T is the time that it takes to fall, and S is the distance. One final word. I have not in this presentation presented all the calculations and results that I got. I think it's really important that other physicists and engineers run their own calculations following this pattern, making the similar calculations to verify for themselves and for others that what I've just asserted is true.